Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Crap. It is Tuesday and that means it's reviews day. And today I'm gonna to be talking about a product I've been waiting on for quite some time to share with you. When I first delved into miniature painting with proper miniature paints instead of just craft paints, I first went with Reaper paints. And these were great as a starting point. They come already fairly thin. So they're very forgiving for a new painter who's not diligent about correctly thinning their paints right out of the bottle onto a wet palette and it's going to be basically good to go. This also meant that because they are already fairly thin that they're pretty easy to shake up and they don't separate too much. But after some time I expanded my paint collection and I added a whole bunch of Vallejo game color paints. And these are considerably thicker. They're far less forgiving for a new painter and you do have to thin them, but that's kind of their advantage. And the reason, or one of the reasons, a lot of seasoned painters really love the Vallejo line. They're really thick. They're heavily pigmented, which means you can control how much you dilute and thin them. And in theory, because they're thicker out of the bottle, you're gonna get more paint mileage out of one bottle. The problem is that they separate like a motherfucker, and they're really difficult to shake. Uh, just shaking them by hand, you could sit there all day shaking it and it probably will not properly mix, especially when the bottle is full. And realistically what happens is you shake it a bit, then you give up and then you just use it and it's not properly mixed. I wanted to solve this problem. I wanted a tool to help me shake these better. Now I'm not gonna talk about the fancy expensive Vortex mixers from Science Labs. That's not an option here. And I'm not gonna talk about the MacGyver tactic of strapping the paint bottle to a jigsaw and shaking it up. That works, that's fine. But I wanted a solution that was clean, simple, practical, could sit on my desk, could just did what it was supposed to do, press a button, and good to go. On Amazon, there's really two options for this. There's two paint bottle shakers. One is the Robart Hobby Paint Shaker, and it is marketed to and for miniature hobby paints and to hobbyists. The other option is a generic Chinese off-brand nail polish shaker. The Robart one is more expensive. It looks better, it comes in a nice black housing and it, it's marketed to hobbyists. It's like 40 to 50 as of filming today, whereas the generic nail polish shaker was like $26 and also has a coupon for $3 off right now, so $23. So the generic one that's being sold for nail polish is quite a bit cheaper. And my gut told me that both of these are just cheap, Chinese electronics that are basically the same. It's just one probably has a nicer housing and is marketed to hobbyists, so therefore it's more expensive. I could be wrong about it. The Robart one may actually be better and worth the extra cost. If you've had both and you wanna let me know the difference or if one's better than the other or not, post them in the comments. That's super cool. I decided to just get the cheaper one and I ordered the nail polish shaker and saved myself some money. When I first got it, I opened it up and my suspicions were kind of confirmed. This was a cheap feeling, very lightweight piece of equipment. Initially, I was gonna review this fairly quickly. I thought it would make a, for a good video, but because of the questionable quality, I decided to use it for a few months before making a video about it because I wanted to make sure that it didn't instantly burn out the motor or die. I can say that three months later, using it a fair amount, and it still is working fine. It feels cheap, it's kind of ugly, it's loud, it sounds awful, but it works. It mixes the paint. You 
put the bottle on, strap it in, turn it on, you can do something else, and it does what it's supposed to do. That being said, the Vallejo paints in particular are so thick that just putting it on the shaker is not enough. It would have to stay there for a very long time for it to adequately mix the pigments, especially if the bottle is nearly full. There's just not enough room for the liquid to move around and mix. So I quickly realized that they do in fact need agitators. A lot of people instantly jump to things like stainless steel ball bearings or BBs or little chunks of pewter or whatever to put in the dropper bottles to act as agitators. And this makes sense. Ball bearings are an, a thing you would think to use. I was reluctant to do that because if the quality of the stainless steel isn't actually really good, then those ball bearings could rust. And you do not want rust forming in your all your bottles of your massive collection of expensive miniature paints. That would be a nightmare. And the thing about these stainless steel ball bearings you get from places like Amazon or eBay is that there's no way to guarantee the quality of them. I could have ordered some, had them been fine, link to them, then you order them and you get a different batch from a different factory and they rust and they ruin your paints. I didn't want to do that. So I instead uh, opted for hematite beads. These are beads that will not rust and are heavy enough to properly agitate the paint. I bought like a 15 inch strand of these beads for just a couple bucks, cut them off the strand, put them in a container, and now every time I go to mix a paint, I open up the dropper bottle, put in a couple agitators, close it, put it on the shaker, and it works awesome. I will say that there is a noticeable improvement to the speed of mixing if you use two of these beads instead of one, and it's absolutely worth it to drop two of them in there. Somehow the two of them moving around works significantly better. I didn't go through and put them in all of my paint collection right off the bat. I'm just adding them as I need the paints. One thing to keep in mind, Reaper paints. If this is what you're using, you don't need to add an agitator to these. Not because they're thinner, but because they actually already have one in them. When you get a bottle that is half full and you shake it around, you can actually tell that there is a little agitator moving around in these bottles. And I've heard rumors that it's actually a little metal skull, like a miniature skull from one of their castings. I don't know if that's true because I've never finished one of these bottles to actually see one, but that's what I've heard. Either way, there's, there's something in there and I found that you don't need to add any more agitators to the Reaper ones. But Vallejo, other thick paints, absolutely add two of these. If you don't want to, for some reason, get the hematite beads, although, I don't know why you wouldn't. If you're absolutely wanting to use the ball bearings, what you really need to do is test them out first. Take a couple of them, put them in some salt water, leave them overnight or for a couple days. If they're a problematic, crappy quality stainless steel, you're gonna see them rust very quickly. If they start showing signs of rust, do not put them in your paints. If after a couple days they're not rusting, they're probably of a decent quality and you're probably safe to put them in there. But again, the hematite, it's like, it's a sure thing. They're, it's not gonna rust. My conclusion after purchasing and using this nail polish shaker for a couple months, it is a must have. It is probably some of the best hobby money I've spent in a very long time. It removes one of the most annoying things about mini painting, which is grabbing a bottle, seeing it separated and just sitting there and shaking it. You can put it on, let it shake while I'm painting and it's good to go. I know it's thoroughly mixed. I just love it. Again, I don't have the more expensive Rob Art one to see if it is better or worth the extra cost. If you do and you know, feel free again to put it in the comments section. But I will say that this cheap 20 some dollar nail polish shaker is doing the job just fine. See how it is in a year from now, but for now, it's holding up and it's doing the job and I think it was money well spent. So if you've been struggling with this too, 
and you've been considering one of these shakers, I highly suggest them. I actually think you could probably use them on craft paints as well, although I've never felt a need to because those mix a lot easier and the lids are of questionable integrity and you might end up spraying paint everywhere, but you probably can use your craft paints on them too. I don't bother, I just use the mini paints. Yeah, I highly recommend getting one of these. Uh, I will put links to both of them uh, but the one I used is the cheaper one, and I will put links to the hematite beads that I bought, the actual same seller and manufacturer, the right size, because it took me a long time to figure out the right size and all that. So I will link to exactly the beads that I used as well as the shaker. Get them if you want to. These are affiliate links, so I will earn a commission if you purchase one of them and that helps fund these videos. Or don't, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's highly worth the investment. What do you guys think? A lot of you out there who have much more experience with these things than I do, what do you use? Again, you can use a jigsaw if you want. You can spend a couple hundred bucks on a fancy vortex mixer from a lab that apparently work amazingly, but that's not something I want to do. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Hit that like button if you liked it. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section. And I will see you on Friday for the next build video where I actually am doing a whole bunch of painting. I painted a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know if you can see it there. I painted 21 figures for my war band. So we're gonna see how I tackled that. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you again next week. Cheers.